To get to this, you have to go through these. Arya Shawbury's trainee helicopter instructors have been given state-of-the-art VR headsets to take armchair flying to a new level. And of course, we had to take them for a spin. I'm getting an exclusive flight over the Midlands without leaving the classroom. So what you're looking at at the moment is uh, a recorded footage of, uh, of being in a Juno helicopter. Uh, and uh, I'm flying a maneuver uh, called an auto rotation. Um, and if you look around, you can see through 360 degrees, it, it really does feel like you're actually in the aircraft. Uh, you can read all the flight instruments, you can see what the, the pilots are doing, uh, and, and obviously you can see out the window. So it's, it's really immersive and, and really feels like you're actually flying the aircraft. It's so realistic and I feel like I should be moving. Like As the aircraft turns, yeah. I feel like I should be turning. This is really, really quite the reality of flying, isn't it? It, it really is. In, in some ways, it's um, more realistic than a simulator because it, it is actually real. And whilst I'm not moving the controls at all, um, it, I can certainly learn from what I'm seeing as to how uh, a manoeuvre should be flown, the, the attitudes that should be flown, the speeds, the powers, all that sort of thing um, that normally people would learn only by really being in an aircraft. Now they can watch this footage over and over again until right, they're now comfortable with it. Um, and, and we are seeing improvements in their, their performance in the air because they've been able to look at this footage uh, and really get better and better. This is miles away from their old way of training. Before the delivery of 17 headsets, these students used to have to imagine they were taking a flight. When you close your eyes and you're sat doing armchair flying, it can be quite hard to picture it. Whereas now with that, with the headsets, you fully immerse yourself and it's like you are transported up to the aircraft and you can see all the way around. Uh, so yeah, it allows you to visualize it a lot better. So what you'll see is you're uh, in the aircraft at Chetwind, um, in area left, uh, heading 320, uh, and you're about to set off for a, uh, a downwind quick stop. So if you listen to the audio, it'll be telling you about all the various checks, radio calls that we talked about, the war considerations. It was certainly useful at the start of the course with that in yeah, get, getting to grips with what the screens look like. Obviously, they're different to the Wildcat, and which I've become used to, uh, but this has helped me, hopefully, uh, quickly adapt to the Juno. It does bring more realism to it, certainly than it was 10 years ago when I came through at Shawbury. What was it like then? Cardboard cutouts and um, effectively sit in little chairs and pretend there's a cockpit in front of you and imagine that you're flying it, really. What the students see through VR is actual footage taken from flights at the station. This in-house style approach is allowing the instructors to tailor their teaching to the course. Some of the uh, recordings that we watch on the VR headsets, they have deliberate errors put in, so it allows us to practice to be able to see if we notice the error for starters, and then we can pause it and we can try and debrief it. Um, or we can rewind it and see if there was an error that we might have missed. But uh, yeah, it's a good, good bit of kit to something that if you were just with your with your other trainees, you, you wouldn't be able to do. Whereas you can have it uh, pre-recorded by an instructor would be good. What I'm really hoping that we'll see in the future, as I start to get more and more footage, uh, is that we'll get an improvement in the performance of the students in the air, a reduction in the number of uh, sorties that have failed. Um, and of course that will save money because every extra flying hour that we, we have is hundreds if not thousands of pounds uh, that we have to pay for that. So that's what I'm looking for in the future. It's going to take a while until we have that sort of length of, uh, of sort of data to be able to review that. But that's what I'm, I'm really hoping and, and working towards. While virtual reality is adding to their teaching, it's not taking time away from their standard flying hours or time in the simulators, but it is allowing them more hands-on training without the costs of running a helicopter. Kirsty Chambers, BFBS Forces News, RAF Shawbury. Thanks for watching. For more from BFBS Forces News, like and subscribe to our channel.